Today's crochet tutorial is going to be on how to make this death's head hawk moth. They're fantastic little creatures, albeit they do come with a lot of superstition and and I would say pretty <laughs> they come by it pretty honestly, I would think. I mean, first of all, they have this this skull appearance on the back of their thorax, right? So if that's not enough to creep somebody out, the fact that they in their caterpillar state can eat lots and lots of nightshade, deadly nightshade, and survive just fine is problematic for the average person, I would guess. However, they don't tell you how these creatures would actually prefer to live in your potato fields, but with modern farming and the pesticides and the chemicals that they use, you're not going to really find these guys in a modern potato farming venture. What you will, though, however, is find them in, oh, let's say, an organic potato field or in your regular garden at home if you're not using a bunch of chemicals. They're pretty fantastic in that they, when they become a moth, they can smell like a bee and not just any bee, the queen bee, which allows them to slip into a beehive and feed on the honey. Some even believe that the squeaky sound they make is very similar to that of a queen bee sound. However, once they've fed on the honey, they're unable to make that sound for several hours. Another interesting thing about these guys, which does not help their reputation, is that when they're caterpillars and they move into the pupa stage, they actually dig themselves into the ground and that's where they stay until they're ready to emerge as a moth. Things that make them interesting, however, is when they're in their moth stage, they also feed on nectar. And when they're gathering their nectar from various different plants and flowers, it's not uncommon to see them hovering above the flower while they feed, much like you might expect to see a hummingbird do it. Welcome to Weaving Weird Studio and my creative weird life. My name is Sig, and what a pleasure it is to have this time with you today. It's your interest and support that allows me to contribute new content and weekly videos. Help us all grow together by tapping that subscribe bar, notification bell, and like buttons. I look forward to your comments and always value your feedback. Now let's get started. So for this death head moth, while you can certainly use yarn and a variety of sizes of yarn, depending on your taste and what you may have available. I am going to use thread because I want something that's a little more traditionally, oh, let's say lacy and applique like. So what I'm starting with for this particular death head moth, I am going to use this pumpkin orange. I'm going to use this natural color thread. And keep in mind, all these, these threads are size 10. Uh, what you see here is basically from the Aunt Lydia's collection, the various different colors. I have black. I have a royal blue. And then I have, I think it's called um, Shades of Brown, even though it's kind of a variegated thread that has some light blue and almost a tawny color in there. And then in this case, I'm also using a number two or a 1.50 still. So we're going to begin this piece by making the skull. And we're going to start by chaining nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we're going to go ahead and slip stitch in five chains from the hook. So right about there. And I like to make that one very tight. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to join in the last stitch. So now you can kind of see that I have two basically eye sockets. 
right? Or at least the beginnings of them. It's a little hard to see on this, but it's going to become more apparent as we go along. The next thing I'm going to want to do is make a chain. Let's get that around there, right? Okay, make my chain. So I'm going to single crochet seven single crochets in this first four chain loop. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then in the next chain four loop, I'm going to single crochet seven more. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you should look at some have something like this now. You can kind of see the beginnings of the two eye sockets. Then the next thing I want to do is chain two. And then I want to join into that first single crochet. I'm going to chain one. So the next thing we're going to want to do is single crochet four times. So the next stitch, we're going to begin our first single crochet. So that'll be one, and then two, and then three, and then four. After that, I'm going to want to half double crochet in the next four stitches. So this will be my first half double crochet and then two and then three and then four and then I'm going to want to do single crochet four times So one, two, three, and four. Then we're going to do a slip stitch in the very next stitch. So now you should have something that looks like this. Next thing I want to do is chain two. Then I want to double crochet twice in this chain two space. And then I want to chain two again. And now I want to join in the very next stitch. And then this is where I'm going to finish off. And then you can now see that we have a little tiny skull face that will represent the skull head that appears on the back thorax of your moth. Now we're going to add or change our color to black. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the stitch 
right after where we finished off, where we joined. So I'm going to come right in here. And we're going to work in the back loop only. So I got my slip stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch. And then as continuing to do back loop only, I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And then the next stitch I'm going to increase. In other words, I'm going to do two single crochets in the same stitch. Then I'm going to single crochet four times. Then I'm going to increase again in the next stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet three times. And then I'm going to double crochet in that next stitch, basically the stitch where you started the chain two in the previous row. So that's a half double crochet. And then I'm going to do a double crochet in that same stitch. And then in the second chain, I'm going to single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet in that next double crochet. And then single crochet again in the next stitch. So that'll give me three single crochets across the bottom of the top teeth. And then I'm going to go ahead and in the next stitch, or I should say the next single crochet, I'm going to do a double crochet. And then that same stitch, a half double crochet. And then I'm going to join. I'm in chain one. So now you should have the beginnings of your thorax piece with the image of the skull on the back of it. So now this next round is not is, is just standard crochet right so you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about crocheting in the back loops it's just regular single crochets and whatever other crochet is going to be part of this pattern so i've got my chain one now i want to single crochet in the same stitch and then i want to single crochet four times so we're going to have one, two, three, and four. And the next stitch is going to be an increase. And then I want to chain 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So this is going to be our first antenna. And so I'm then going to go ahead and do a slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. And then I'm going to make a chain one. And then from there, I'm going to do 17 single crochets. But these single crochets are going to be wrapped around this remaining 10 chains. Okay. So it'll look something like this. So that'll be one. And then two. And then three. So basically you're using your chain stitches as more like cording almost. And you're going to get this effect, the kind of twirly antenna effect that you saw on the previous examples by doing this single crochet around the chain stitches. So after I make my 17 single crochets on my antennae, my first antennae, I am going to single crochet. Then I'm going to skip the next stitch and I am going to double crochet five times in the next stitch. So that'll be one, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to skip the next stitch and then single crochet in the stitch after that. So as you can see, I now have my first antennae and the head. Then I'm going to chain 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 for my second antenna. And then I'm going to slip stitch in the third chain from my hook just as before. I'm going to chain one and I am going to then single crochet, 17 single crochets around the remaining 10 chain cord. In the next stitch I'm going to increase. So basically two single crochets in that next stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet four. Then I'm going to increase. And then I'm going to single crochet three. Single crochet one more. Then the next stitch will be an increase. So single crochet two. And then single crochet once and finish off. So now we're going to switch over to a new color. In this case, I'm using orange. You can use orange or yellow or whatever color you care to use. I personally am trying to keep my motif sort of within the the range that the that the natural coloring of a of a death head hawk moth would look like so i'm going to go to my left antenna and i'm going to count three single crochets so that puts me right here at approximately right across from the left eye socket so i'm going to Go ahead and slip stitch and then single crochet in the same stitch. Then the next stitch I'm going to do a half double crochet. And in the stitch after that I'm going to do three double crochets together.
I'm going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then a single crochet in the stitch after that. And then I'm going to slip stitch. four times. Right across the bottom. And in this case, I'm going to slip stitch in the back loops of those next four stitches. And then the next stitch, I'm gonna do a standard single crochet. And then a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then three double crochets together in the next stitch after that. And then a half double crochet. And then a single crochet which brings you up the other side in basically the same location, directly across. And then we're going to finish this one off. Now we're going to switch over to black. And so now from here on in, we're going to have some color changes, but I'm not going to cut my threads until we're finished with what we need as far as color changes are for that particular color. So you just see as we go along, it'd be kind of like a tapestry stitch a little bit, but, but um, basically this will just prevent us from having to constantly switch out colors. We're going to begin with the fourth stitch in. Basically, the third double crochet. And then for this, we're going to go back to back loops only again. So we're going to fasten in the black. And then I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch. And then two more single crochets. Then in that next stitch, I'm going to do two half double crochets together. Then I'm going to do three double crochets. Now these three double crochets will be crocheted with both loops. So basically like you would regularly do a double crochet. Maybe. There we go. So there'll be one, two, and then three. And then the next stitch is going to be the two half double crochets in that back loop. And then we're going to have three single crochets, one in each of the next three stitches, back loop only, of course. So now we're going to switch to orange. And I'm still working back loops only. So I'm going to want a total of six half double crochets in the orange. And I already did my first one. And then I'll do my second one, of course, back loop only. 
And then I want to make sure that my color threat, my color, my black in particular is coming with me. So I'm going to basically just go ahead and crochet that right in there. Basically weave it in as we crochet along because I'll be picking up that black here soon enough. So now that's two, three, four, five, and then six. And now that we're here, we're going to work in the blue. And then back loop only. For the blue, I want three half double crochets in the same stitch. And I'm going to pull my orange back in. Change to my orange color. And so now you can see that I got the blue, the black, and the orange together. So this is where it gets a little tricky. It can get a little tangly if you're not careful. But just go slow. And I'm going to do six more half double crochets. So I'm going to be one, six. Then we get to that sixth one, the end of the row. We're going to change back over to black. And turn the work. And trim off any little ends that you might have. <clears throat> Okay, so you can kind of see where we're headed with with this. I'm going to start getting in the segments of the body. Now for the black, I've got my, my slip stitch and my chain right there. And then in the next stitch, back loop only, I'm going to single crochet. Once. Two, three, four, five, and six. And make sure that you get your you get your extra colors woven in there too as you go along. And then now on this eighth stitch right here in the center. I'm going to single crochet three single crochets in that same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet six stitches more. So one, two. Now I'm going to change my color again. I'm going to change it back over to the orange. And chain one, turn my work. Make sure I got my extra threads coming with me. And then, of course, back loop only again in the next stitch. We're going to do double crochet or half double crochet, sorry. And then again, two, three, four, five, six. 
uh, puts us right back here in the center. So in that seventh stitch, I'm switching over to my blue. Again, back loop only, I'm going to half double crochet three blues in the same stitch. I always do that. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to switch back over to my orange. Now back loop only, half double crochet in the orange. So again, I'm going to switch over to the black, turn our work, and this can be pretty fiddly because it is the thread and it is kind of kind of tedious to work with a little bit. And you just take your time. As before, back loop only. Your black is going to be single crocheted. You're going to single crochet those six single crochets. And then right there in the center, you're going to single crochet three times in that same stitch. Then after that, still in the black, single crochet in the next six stitches. Now it's time to switch to orange again. This time I'm going to actually half double crochet five times. So one, two, three, four and five and then I'm going to take the blue I'm going to half double crochet in the next back loop. And then I'm going to do three half double crochets in the next back loop. And then in the next back loop after that, I'm going to do one half double crochet. And then I'm going to change my colors back over to the orange. So 
And then I'll do my half double crochets, five of them, in the next stitches. So one. So now switch back over to the black and we're going to single crochet back loop only through the length of this next row except stopping in the middle as per usual to give ourselves three single crochets in that one single stitch. So I should have six more single crochets to do at this point. Now this time with our orange, we want to do four half double crochets. Again, still working the back loop only. So we get one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to switch over to the blue. Now keep in mind, this is our last row of orange, so you'll be able to cut that off and this thread will be a little more manageable to work with. So now I'm going to half double crochet in the blue. One, two, three. And then this stitch where I just put that third one in, I want to put two more half double crochets into that same stitch. And then I want to do a half double crochet in the next stitch and then another half double crochet in the stitch after that. And then we're going to change to the orange. And then I'm going to do four half double crochets for the orange. So now we can fasten off the orange. And switch over to the black. So now we're going to go ahead and single crochet across as before. Six single crochets. And then that seventh stitch will have three single crochets in that. And then six more single crochets to finish up the row. And we're going to switch over to the blue. And then this time with the black, we can leave this off to the side here for a little bit. We can still leave it connected because we are going to still be using this black here in just a few minutes. So right now we can just focus on the blue. So what I'm going to do is half double crochet six. So one, two,
three, four, five, and six. Now remember this row still needs to be in the back loop only. And then in my seventh stitch, I'm going to do three half double crochets in the same stitch. And then six more half double crochets to finish the row. I'm going to chain one, turn my work. And then I'm going to do a half double crochet in the next six stitches. This time we do not need to do back loop only. So this time it's just regular, regular crochet stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then now in that seventh stitch, I'm going to do three double crochets into that same stitch. And then I'm going to finish up the row with six more half double crochets. And then we'll have one more row of the half double crochets. So again, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then three half double crochets in that seventh stitch. So one, two, and three. And then we'll finish up with six more half double crochets. Okay. And we will revisit with the blue at the end of this as well with the orange. This is what we should have now and we should only have one color that we're working with at this point. Right. And from here on in, it'll just be one color at a time. We're not going to be changing very many colors. And if we do change a color, it's simply going to be for another another aspect of, of this motif. So with the black, we're going to go ahead and do single crochets all the way around our piece. So you're just basically going to want to do a single crochet for each, you know, basically each stitch length. Okay, so now as we get to the head part, it's going to be a little different than you might think. So we're going to just follow the body. On up so right up to the base of the antenna and then instead of following over the antenna what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and single crochet around the thorax of the body so you'll see a little bit of the head poking out, but really what we want is that impression of the top part of the body. So I'm just going to go and work my single crochets over the tops of these crochets, just right around the top thorax part of the body. So 
So you can kind of see just like that. And then I'm going to finish up this first round and then we will have one more round and I will meet you back here. Okay. Okay, so your piece should look something like this now. You've got the first round of the body. You've got your head, you've got your thorax, you've got the actual bottom part of the body and I can't remember what that's called right here at the moment. Now we're going to do our last round and this is going to be a reverse single crochet. So now the reverse single crochet is basically a crab stitch. And if you're not familiar with that stitch, it's really pretty simple. Um, it's just doing your single crochet, but in a reverse stitch. So I went ahead and I just chained one. And then what I do is I will insert my hook into this crochet, the single crochet behind, and I will yarn over and pull through my yarn. So I now have two loops on my hook, yarn over, and then pull through the two loops. Okay, again, I will insert my hook into the next single crochet, going backwards. I will pull my yarn through so I have two loops on my hook, yarn over, and pull through. So it's just basically a single crochet, except moving in the reverse direction. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. So you've got a couple of different options. You can leave your piece like this and move on to the wings. Or you can take this time to add a little embroidery to it. Now that's what I did with my pieces. So we have this. And then I've got these two other pieces here that I actually did a light satin stitch over my yellows and oranges and just the top part of the blue just to give it a little more texture give it a little more weight because I am using these as like a as an applique like a patch for lack of a better description so you can stop now and do a basic satin stitch on your piece or you can go ahead continue with the video and start following the wing tutorial. So now we're going to get started on the wings. I'm first going to show you how to do this, the larger wing, and you'll make two of these, and then also the smaller second half of the wing, and you'll make two of these as well. So let's get started. So I'm going to take my, my thread here, this variegated brown or shades of brown. And I'm going to begin by chaining seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm going to do a double treble crochet. In other words, I'm going to wrap my yarn around my hook four times. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that very first chain. And yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two more loops. Now the next thing I want to do is on this, this bar, this double treble bar here, I am going to crochet 12 single crochets. I'm 
I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm going to single crochet in each of the 12 single crochets. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to crochet three chains. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next single crochet. Then I'm going to chain three again. I'm going to skip a stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch. Chain three, skip a stitch, and then single crochet in the next stitch. Chain three, Skip a stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch. Chain three. Skip a stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch. Chain three. Skip a stitch and single crochet in that last stitch. So you should have six chain three spaces. And then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work again. And in that first chain three space, I'm going to single crochet four. One, two, three, and four. In the second chain three space, I'm going to single crochet one. Then I'm going to half double crochet. Then I'm going to double crochet. Then I'm going to half double crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet in that second chain three space. And I'm going to do the same in the next chain three space. I'm going to single crochet, then half double crochet, double crochet, then half double crochet, and then single crochet. And then I'm going to do that same pattern in the next chain three space. So again, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet. And we're going to do it one more time in the next chain three space. So single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet and single crochet and then in that last chain three space we are going to go ahead and single crochet five single crochets so one two three four and five Now the next thing I want to do is chain one, turn my work. I'm going to chain three more, one, two, three. Then I'm going to make a picot, chain three picot. So I'm going to chain three again, one, two, three. And then I'm going to insert my hook in that third chain from the hook. And I'm going to make a slip stitch. And that gives us our picot. And then I'm going to chain three again. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do a treble crochet, US treble crochet, into this single crochet stitch right here that kind of sits that sits right on top of 
of the single crochet bar. And so this is what you should have. This is what it should look like for you. So then I'm going to do that again. Chain three. And then a chain three peacock. And chain three again. And then a treble. Right into that next single crochet that sits right above the single crochet bar, the next one. And we're going to do this three more times. So one, two, three. Okay, so now that you've completed five of these spaces with the three chain peacock, you're going to go ahead and chain five and then single crochet in this very last stitch of the single crochets on this chain three space just below and then chain one. So this is what you should look like. So far. So now I'm going to turn the work again. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet nine single crochets in this chain five space. Two and nine. And then the next thing I want to do is single crochet four single crochets in this space before we hit the first peacock. I'm going to have one, two, three, and four. And as you do this, turn, start working to turn your peacock so that it's facing in a downward position. And then I want to do four more single crochets just on the other side of this peacock. So we're going to maneuver our first single crochet just on the other side of the peacock so that it pokes through and points in the right direction. So we've got one, two, three, and four. Next, I want to do four half double crochets in the space before we hit the three chain peacock. One, two, three, and four. And again, just as before, I'm going to do the half double crochet, four of them just on the other side of that, of that peacock. I'm going to do that while we make sure our peacock is pointing in a downward position. So that'll be one, two, three, and four. Again, the same thing with the half double crochet in this next space. So four half double crochets. And 
and then four more half double crochets just on the other side of that peacock And then again, in the next space with the half double crochet, four of them on each side of the peacock. Right, now in this next space, we're going to do the four half double crochets on this front side of the peacock, just as before. So one, two, three, and four. And then on the other side of this peacock, We are going to do four single crochets. So that'll be one and two, three, and four. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain seven. And then I'm going to make kind of like a um, five chain circle. So just watch what I do. So I'm going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to slip stitch in that six chain from the hook. Just like that. Then I'm going to single crochet six chains. And I'm going to then single crochet, connect my chains right here to this next stitch that sits right above the double treble crochet bar. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm going to single crochet nine. One, two, three, eight, nine. So just like so. And then where we made this loop, right? So we want the loop facing in towards the leaf itself. And then we're going to single crochet, three single crochets just along the top bar inside the loop. Okay, so, you know, just like that. And then I'm going to single crochet 10 single crochets down this remaining chain, series of chains. Eight, nine, and 10. Then I'm going to continue down this line to the count of five. So you'll see, so I'll do one crochet here in this single crochet right there on the side. So that'll be one. And then in this chain space, that'll be two. And then in this space right here, that'll be three in the next chain, or sorry, single crochet. 
And the next chain space will be four. And then this next single crochet space right here will be five. And then I'm going to do nine more single crochets down this seven count chain. So one and nine. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm going to single crochet in each stitch along the outer edge of this entire wing. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then I will meet you back here to show you how to do the final step of this wing. So, so far, this is what it should look like for you. Now the last part of this top wing is going to be much like what we did around the actual body. And that is that we're going to do a reverse single crochet or otherwise known as a crab stitch. So basically it's a single crochet, but it's being worked in reverse and again, I'll show you how to do that. So you have your, your loop on the hook. Then you're going to enter your next single crochet in reverse. So instead of going forward, you're going to go backwards. And you're going to do one of these crab stitches or reverse single crochet in each single crochet along the edge of the wing and then you're going to end but make sure that you leave a nice long tail because that tail is what you're going to use to actually attach your wing to the body of your moth and I'll get this finished and then after I show you what this looks like finished, then I will show you how to do the last bottom part of the wing. So this is what two of the top part of the wings are going to look like. Now a quick note, you have a right side wing and a left side wing. And in this particular design, the right side wing and the left side wing are done exactly the same. You don't have to flip anything except for one exception. When it's time for you to start doing this black edging, for your left side wing, you're going to actually start your edging right here at what would be the base of your wing. So you're going to start your reverse single crochet down here at the base of the wing and work towards the top front part of your wing. When you're working on your right wing, you will actually start with your black edging for your reverse single crochet from the end or the very beginning part of the top of your wing and then you're going to work in the backwards direction and finish at the bottom. So your left hand wing you're going to start at the bottom and finish at the, the top part of your wing. And then on your right wing you're going to start at the top this beginning portion right here and you're going to work your way around and finish at the bottom portion of your wing in terms of where they will be attached. So now for the bottom part of the wings it's going to be these yellow or orange colored wings right down here. The second half of the wings. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. This again. So to begin we're going to start by chaining seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
And then for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a single crochet in that second chain from the hook. And that'll act as kind of an anchor point, a stopping point. Because now what I want to do is I want to single crochet Fifteen single crochets around this seven chain length. So I will count this first single crochet as one. And then I will crochet 14 more single crochets on the length of this sixth chain So that'll be three. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so I have a total of fifteen on this right here. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to be careful not to let this single crochet slip off the end of this of this chain stitch foundation. And then I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch once and then single crochet in the next stitch. And then one more time. So you can see where I chained one, turned my work, and then single crocheted in three of the single crochets. Now I'm going to make a chain of 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Plus four. So one, two, three and four. So that'll give me a total of 18 on the chain. Then I'm going to wrap my yarn over five times on my hook, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to skip this stitch, this next single crochet, and I am going to insert my hook into the following single crochet. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over, 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 pull through two loops. And yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So now I should have something that looks like this. Or you should have something that looks like this. And I'm going to chain four. And then wrap my yarn over my hook five times one two three four and five and again i'm going to skip a stitch the single crochet and then i'm going to go into the single crochet after that and that's where i'm going to insert my hoop or sorry insert my hook and then yarn over and pull through two loops again just as we did before I'm going to chain four and then I'm going to yarn over five times again skip a stitch insert my hook into the next stitch and then chain four and again, yarn over five times. Skip a stitch. Insert my hook into the next stitch. And 
I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do this one more time. Skip the next stitch and then insert the hook. So by this point, you should have five spaces, open spaces. And now I'm going to chain six, two, three, four, five, and six. And now I'm going to insert my hook into that very last stitch. One. I'm going to turn my work. And now I'm going to tw single crochet 12 single crochets in this first chain six space. Eleven. 12. And then next we're going to go ahead and we're going to single crochet five single crochets in each of the next spaces. So one, two, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, and five. So, so far your work should look like this. Now the next thing we want to do is chain one, turn my work. I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to single crochet right here in this single crochet that sits right on top of this bar, the long bar. And again, chain five. And then single crochet right in the single crochet above the next bar. One, two, three four, five, and again, we're going to complete this length of this wing doing just that. And then now once we get here to this last little bit, I'm going to chain five. And then I'm going to single crochet in the fourth single crochet from my last stitch. I'm going to chain five. And then single crochet in the fourth stitch or the fourth single crochet from my last stitch. And then we're going to do it one more time. And then in the fourth single crochet from my last stitch. So you should have a total of eight five chain spaces. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. Then I'm going to single crochet in that first chain five space. And then half double crochet. And then double crochet. And then half double crochet. And then a single crochet. And then in the next five space, I'm going to single crochet three times. 
I'm going to half double crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet three more times. And then I'm going to do that again in the third five chain space. So single crochet three times. Half double crochet. And then three single crochets again. Now in this fourth five chain space, I'm going to single crochet twice and then half double crochet twice. Then I'm going to double crochet once. Then I'm going to half double crochet twice again. And then single crochet twice. Now I'm going to do that same pattern in the next three five spaces. And then in my last five chain space, I'm going to single crochet three times. One half double crochet. And then three more single crochets. And this is where I'm going to finish off. But I'm going to leave myself a nice long tail because I'm going to need this tail to sew my wing on with. So you should now have four pieces. The two top wings, the two bottom wings, and then your body. And your top wings you will position where you'd like to have them positioned and how you'd like to have them positioned along with the bottom wings. And you will sew them onto and position them onto your moth as you see fit, but in a way that is reminiscent of the actual way the moth's wings lay. So just remember this open chain bar is going to fit right along the back side bottom of this top wing like so. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew our pieces together. And then I will be right back with you and we will finish up. Now is the time for me to say goodbye. So until I see you wonderful and crafty fiber artists again, stay safe, stay amazing, and above all, keep weaving your weird. Bye-bye now.